Very nice to meet you. Oh, Thanks nice for talking to, to Real.com today. Um, okay. How was directing for a award-winning special effects guy? <laughs> <laughs> very interesting, very challenging. Um, probably the most difficult thing I've ever tried to do in my life, you know, but also very rewarding. Yeah. Definitely. Great film, actually. Oh, well, thank great you. Film. Thank you. I just wondered, G-Force, great name. What does it stand for? And did you have any other names for the, the spy unit apart from G-Force in the... Pretty much Money. not. I, I came up with G Force. G Force is, is guinea pig force. Yeah, that's where the name. Short and sweet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Makes sense. The story isn't that far fetched, is it? I mean, can you tell us about the um, fourteen arrested squirrels in Iran <laughs> that I've read about? Well, you know what's interesting because it was my son at five that came up with the initial mm. concept from the preschool guinea pig. But um, I think the reason that Jerry Bruckheimer took the project was it, it's a good story. It had great characters, but I think what really cinched the deal was the fact that it's based on actually a lot of reality. You know? And as you say, if you Google squirrels in Iran, mm -hmm. you'll find that there were 12 squirrels that were captured by the Iranian embassy uh, uh, security team, I guess, that found squirrels equipped with uh, audio and visual equipment on them, supposedly from the US, wow. which I don't doubt. <laughs> and then uh, if you Google, for instance, DARPA.com and go to the cyborg section, which really exists, uh, and look in there, you'll find that there's a whole bunch of research which is being done uh, on insect pupa where they take nanotechnology, apply that, and at the end when they mature, mm -hmm. they literally have a radio controlled or like a car or airplane that they no, can pilot in. I yeah, don't believe that. It's absolutely true. <laughs> that's so amazing. that's where Mooch came from. Mooch was a mm -hmm. little fly on the wall that carries uh, video equipment, you know, mm -hmm. and you can bug anything. So um, there's a, if you look even back into history, there's some bizarre things like with uh, uh, bats that were used in World War II. So there's plenty to pick from to come up with some great ideas. Yeah, well, it all makes sense, doesn't it, with the yeah. fly, definitely. Um, the th I mean, 3D effects are literally jaw-dropping. Some of the best I've seen, so I've oh, trouble you. watching them. Um, especially the snake. Yes. Terrifying. <laughs> but I heard that initially it was, it was actually being shot in 2D. That's correct. We originally did uh, some initial tests using the Pace rigs, the rigs that James Cameron's using on Avatar right now, my mm -hmm. good friend Eric Brevik used for um, Journey to the Center of the Earth. And the problem with those rigs is that when you're shooting a guinea pig or your actor that's nine inches tall, the camera's two or three times or four times the size of your mm. character. So they don't lend themselves well for the type of action that we were trying to do, and it just didn't work. So as we began to shoot, we shot in 2D. And then as the request came down from Jerry, as it might, that he would like to see it in 3D, it played directly in how I would probably have approached it anyway, which is to produce all the 3D in post. And that makes lots of sense when you think about it, because no other part of movie making do we make choices. I mean, color, editing, you know, um, sound is all done in post. So why in the world would you make stereo decisions in the field, which come back to haunt mm. you? So by doing that, it allowed us creative freedom to sculpt the 3D so that it works well and it's, it's pleasurable to view, and also to be able to push it. One of the things that we're doing is we're projecting uh, GeForce in a widescreen format. We're actually projecting the top and bottom mask as well. So creatively, I can actually have the characters break that mask. And what that does is psychologically push that character literally into the theater, which is what yeah. we're trying to do. So that's the breaking the frame That's breaking concept. the frame technique. So what, exactly. what's, what's the immersive 3D I read about? What, how does... Well, how that, does that work? That, that's pretty much it, yeah, because yeah. in other words, when you, when you do that, one of the problems you find is that the human mind and the, and the eyes work well about 30 feet to maybe 80 feet in terms of depth. Beyond that, you can't see well. And the screen, as you see, melts away in the theater in 3D. And so unless you have people's heads in front of you or some kind of fiducial in the room, it's really hard to appreciate how much comes off. So by breaking the mask, you psychologically, peripherally know where that mask is in the theater, and it grounds the audience member and allows you to appreciate how much the image comes off the screen. Well, it works. It's fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, obvious question. This film will end up on DVD. Yes. So how is it going to translate to the home entertainment audience? That's a good question. I mean, they'll release it as a standard DVD Blu-ray. Uh, they may release it as an anaglyphic blue and green, which is really very poor. Mm. But we're all looking at between three and five years, really sophisticated 3D now reaching the viewer. That's actually technology that's on the way. Fantastic, exciting yeah. stuff. Yeah. And the final question, yeah. has your son any, got any other great ideas up his sleeve? <laughs> The next you know movie. What? Exactly. Well, we have lots of ideas. I think um, he saw it actually for the first time with my wife, you know, loved it. I think from an 11-year-old's perspective now, his biggest thrill was when he saw his name go up. He plays two of the three voices of the ah, mice, and Max nice. Favreau plays the third. Mm. So it's great. Exciting stuff. Well, Family project. Anyway. Yes, exactly. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Anyway, thank, thank you very much. To to Thank you. Thank you.